thousand sixteen hundred dollars. Or any advance at sixteen hundred. On Wednesday, August 6th, Swan Galleries is conducting our annual summer auction of vintage posters. It's one of the larger poster auctions that we hold, with 458 lots. The sale is divided, though, into several really distinct categories, which help make the sale feel smaller and actually make it much more manageable from a collector's point of view. The auction begins with a run of Mather work incentive posters. We also have an excellent assortment of World War I and World War II propaganda posters beach and summer resort posters, something we've been doing for the last several years during our summer sale and which has been met with more and more enthusiasm by the collecting public. We're very lucky to have an incredible selection of food and beverage posters which are surprisingly hard to come by. And once we get through with the specific sections, we also have an excellent assortment of international vintage posters, including a large number of works by the well-regarded and much-beloved Leonetto Cappiello. Over the past couple of vintage poster auctions that Swan Galleries has conducted, we've been able to offer several very rare and unusual Mather work incentive posters. And as a result of the success we had with those lots, we have taken in on consignment even more of those posters this time. Uh, this auction features no less than 33 Mather work incentive posters, ranging from 1924 to 1929. The Mather work incentive posters were a series of posters that were intended to hang in factories, intended to hang in banks, intended to hang in businesses as an incentive to workers to get them to work harder, to get them to work longer, to commit themselves more to their work. They've become extremely popular in recent days and are eagerly sought after by collectors. As we look through the different kind of images that the Mather Company employed in these posters, we really see the range of artistic styles and artistic conceits that the artists who worked for the company were able to employ. Some of them highlight elements of travel. Some of them highlight elements of exploration. Others highlight elements of wildlife and still others highlight elements of sports. Of the 33 different posters that we have in the sale, there's two, I think, that are worthy of drawing attention to. The first is lot number 23, Ready to Spring. This is from 1929 and was designed by William Frederick Elms. Not all of the Mather posters have attributable artists to their design. Many of them were designed anonymously. But aside from the fact that we do know the artist on this piece, it's a beautiful aesthetic poster, and I think it would appeal to someone based on the colors, based on the content. It doesn't stand alone as a Mather work incentive poster per se. It appeals to a much broader group of people. And the same could be said about lot number 30. Touchdown transcends the work incentive genre completely and will strongly appeal to people who are football oriented or who are interested in sports collectibles themselves. In fact, there are many different images in this sale with a sports theme. The Mather artists did images of tennis players, images of divers, images of horse racers, images of boat racers, even images of baseball players. For all of the different times we've been able to offer World War I propaganda posters for auction, we very rarely had such a large collection of World War I food conservation and preservation posters. During the First World War, the U.S. government really called upon the citizens of the United States to contribute to the war effort. And one great way they could do this was by encouraging people to grow what were referred to as victory gardens. This meant they asked the population to help farm for themselves to grow the food that they would eat. The posters that the government issued to promote these victory gardens were quite beautiful, they were patriotic. Some of these were designed by very famous artists like Edward Penfield. And even James Montgomery Flagg of the I Want You fame designed a poster. Lot number 46, Sow the Seeds of Victory, is one of James Montgomery Flagg's posters. I think it's an excellent image, not only because of the message it conveys, not only for the patriotic way it encourages citizens to take part in the war effort, by planting a victory garden. But I also think the message itself, the words, sow the seeds of victory, while we're able to literally translate that into meaning grow your own garden, I think sowing the seeds of victory within a war is about far more than just planting your own food. 
Amidst all the great World War I and World War II posters in the auction, it's actually very difficult to single in on one or two special ones, but I'm going to give it a try, starting with number 77, for victory. This poster is important because it focuses on another aspect of the First World War, which people don't normally think about. That is, that during the war, American women were serving as nurses in France. Another curious thing about this poster is that it was printed in France, but published in the English language, so it clearly was dealing with these American women who were overseas. For the catalog, when I was trying to figure out who the artist of this poster was, and I looked at the signature, I was unable to read it. Consequently, in the catalog, this poster is listed under signature illegible. However, since the catalog came out, I've been contacted by several of my clients who were eager to inform me that not only did they know who the artist was, but they were able to name her. The artist was Nesa Moran McMain, a very popular female illustrator of the time whose illustrations appeared in some of the leading journals of the day, such as the Ladies' Home Journal. So here you have a poster designed by a woman, which in and of itself is unusual. Advertising to a group of people who a lot of collectors and perhaps even historians don't really think about, the American women serving as nurses in France. And you have a poster printed in France in the English language. It's a wonderful example of the curious documents we're able to turn up in this business. And I think if it's not one of the most important of the war posters uh, for sale in this auction, it's certainly one of the most interesting. Another one of the war posters in the auction that I think is particularly worthy of note is lot number 93. This one happens to be a World War II poster, Don't Be a Job Hopper. In many ways, it's in the same vein as the Mather Work Incentive posters, encouraging workers to stick to the job during the war when production was so critical and people's involvement in the war effort was so crucial. That's not why I think this poster is important. It's important because of who the artist is. The artist is a household name virtually all across the world, and that's Walt Disney. Not the Walt Disney Studios, but Walt Disney himself. And I think it's fascinating to note how during the Second World War, so many different facets, so many different people, so many different companies within America were lining up behind the war effort and throwing in their two cents, in this case as Disney. I just find it very interesting by contrast that in today's society, we're not used to seeing famous artists lining up behind the government to promote the war effort. Another perennial favorite with poster collectors are our selection of beach and summer resort posters. For many years we sold ski posters in the winter and then it dawned on us like a weatherman, why not if we can sell ski posters in the winter, sell beach and summer resort posters in the summer. And we've done so for the past five or six years with increasingly better results. More and more the collecting public is waking up to the fact that there are great images of beaches, great images of vacation destinations that are meant for collections that are meant for the walls of vacation houses around the world. Within this collection of beach and summer resort posters are all of the usual suspects of vacation destinations we'd long to visit. Bermuda, Cuba and the Caribbean, the Greek islands, Hawaii, we even have an antique poster map of Long Island. But two posters that are very surprising to see are lots 115 and lot 170. These advertise travel to such obscure vacation and summer destinations that I feel them very worthy of being pointed out. Lot 115 is such a micro-targeted poster, it is advertising travel to Varna in Bulgaria on the Black Sea in the Czech language. So it was aimed at Czechs to take a vacation in Bulgaria. And Lot 170 is advertising travel to Yalta and Sochi, destinations most Americans can safely say they don't even know where they are.